Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Yeah, Ink October is over and done with and I was thinking let's try to get some other creative videos onto the channel and uh, now that I'm not doing an ink oh, inktober uh, video every day um, so today uh, I was gonna work with some watercolor and um, uh, bring you along uh, just for one of the colors at least um, but before we start I want to show you I received my glitter bomb let me just get some privacy here and not show you my address yes I received my glitter bomb from Rachel Ray so I'm so oops I'm so um I don't want to <clears throat> I'm so curious of what's in inside So this is my second glitter bomb. Ooh, a plastic, uh, what do you call, a uh, diamond painting pen with a plastic tip. These are really nice. I have these, they're very nice. What else? A card, oh! Another cover minder. No. <laughs> now I have one black and a white. Oh. Jesus. I hope it's in focus. Oh. And such a beautiful card. It's going to look perfect with the other card I have. Oh. <gasps> No freaking way. <gasps> no way. <laughs> Rachel. <sighs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Rachel. Another one of these cool pens. And some candy Parma violets. Switz, Switzels? I have no idea. Let, let's try it out right away. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's a bit mint. Mm. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. Um, oops. <clears throat> mm, and there's some, I think it's a, uh, not a lot of, uh, what do you call that? Some flower, some purple flower, mm, which you can have in candy and stuff. Very, very nice. I love it. In Swedish, we call it view, but I don't know. And there's a lot of this cool stuff. It's, it's a Halloween theme. You have the black bat and you have some, oh, a cool, a cat, purple, silver. And you have the witches. Awesome. I totally need to do this. Um, uh, have these on my mixed media. I was hoping to get some time to do some of that tomorrow. Oh, Jesus, Rachel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's time I'm painting. 
it looks like it's these uh, key rings. Oh, Jesus, no. This is so cute. I'm sorry for the crinkling. I should have done a real unboxing for this. So there's a tray and a, nor a normal uh, diamond painting pen, but now I have these cool ones. So I'm definitely going to use these. These are so cute. I have I've been looking at these um, key rings. So cool. Look, it's like a glass with a lemon or a lime in it. And you diamond paint both sides. And whoops, you have another uh, drink with a cherry, I think, in it. Nice. Ooh, and you have some pineapple drink. I think Rachel likes drinks, right? And we have another one here. Um, it's some mix. Cute. Oh, look. It has special gems. Look at those. Awesome. God. Oh, and there are some roses there. I don't know if you see them. Nice. Really nice. Thank you so much, Rachel. You are too kind. And I, I mean, oh my God, look at this. How cute. So cute. Oops. Yeah, that, that's just so typical me. Yep. <clears throat> Very nice. I will not keep keep the things in here, but just for now. So that was nice and the candy was really nice. At first it was a, bit, a little bit mintish but then uh, sweet and then that um, flower taste came after. It's not laven lavender. Lav lavender. Well, never mind. Let's, let's move on. Very nice glitter bomb. So the thing is, let me watch. I need to change battery anyway, so uh, I'll get back to you just in a sec. All right. So <clears throat> in my last um, video about uh, watercolor coloring, I introduced you to this uh, swatch stamp and showed you how to stamp it. Well, it was the first time for me using a stamp, so um, I was trying that out and then I showed you how to, yeah, uh, fill in the, the info information you should put here. So it's the mass tone, it's the gradient tone, uh, what brand it is, what name of the color and what pigment it is. And here you should fill in if it's granulating, if, if it's transparent or staining and then the light fastness. So this is how I did on all 12, well, I've done it on all my uh, watercolors, which are in tubes. I also have pans, half pans, but these are what I'm gonna use. And these 12 colors I have in this palette is the colors I want to learn how to use in especially landscape. So, <clears throat> and this is all inspired by the mind of watercolor, okay? So then he recommend that you make like a map of your palette. So this is the mass tone of the colors in this palette. 
uh, and I've written down the names. I see I for forgot to write it down there. We can do that right away. <coughs> and the color here is permanent violet blue. Right. So that was the next step. The third step is to do a so-called trip around the palette where I take this color, this is Moon Glow uh, from Daniel Smith, and you mix it with the next color, which is, um, what do you call it, Anthraquinone Blue. And then you mix Moon Glow with the next blue, Cobalt Blue, and then you mix it with Turquoise and Green, and you go all the way around and find out what happens when you mix these two colors? What happens when you mix these two and these two and these two, right? And I'm going to do that with all the colors. So when I've done it with Moon Glow, then I'm going to take the, the blue one here, the Anthraquinone blue, and mix it with, well, obviously I wouldn't have to do it with Moon Glow, but then I mix it with Cobalt blue and then Turquoise and all the way around. And since I like to, you know, list everything, I have done cards like this. So first I made the swatch card, this, and then I have 12 colors. So, and I've written numbers, number one, and there it says number one. So in this square, there's only the primary red magenta, which is this color. And in the second square, number two, it's gonna be primary, um, red magenta with moon glow. So I mix them and I paint the color here and I'm gonna do that all the way around for each color. So <coughs> I tried out with the permanent violet blue and this is the mixing table I created. And it's kind of cool to see uh, what happens when you mix the colors like Number five, I've mixed the purple, the permanent violet blue with uh, Viridian, which is a very strong green. This is the Viridian. So I mixed Viridian and the permanent uh, violet. And that gave me like a dull turquoise. That's cool. And here I got a, a brown grayish color that's also mixed with a green. So that was kind of cool. And I don't see very much difference with these, but it's different kinds of purple. Um, maybe, well, since I'm very new at using these new brands, they have a lot of pigment in them. So I'm thinking maybe I'm using too much pigment, but that's kind of a learning curve, I guess. So this is for the permanent violet mixing with all the colors in the palette. And now I'm going to do it with this color. I, th I hope you understand what I'm getting at. And so I have one for each color in the palette. The colors are just, oh, they're amazing, really. <clears throat> so, but it took me a while to, well, to do the cards, but also it took me a while to mix and paint. So it's gonna take too long to bring you along for each color. So I will just start out and you can see how I'm doing it. I'm not saying it's the right way. This is just me trying out. I want to get to know my, my, uh, my paints. So I have uh, the Mamer Blue um, Primary Red Magenta here in this tube. So I'm going to put out a little bit of color right here. And so 
in number one is just primary red magenta, right? <clears throat> oh, it's such a beautiful color, isn't it? So I think I'm going to try to maybe uh, <clears throat> use less pigment if I can control it. So I get a more <clears throat> transparent um, feeling to it. You can always add a little, yeah, nice and pink. So let's start out. On second, magenta and moon glow. I'm going to pick up some moon glow over here. And I think this is a very nice way to start out because you're not really painting anything. You're just making swatches and maybe, you know, you don't have to feel so intimidated. So I think it's a very good way. And also, you know, as I said, to find out that there's amazingly a lot of pigment in these colors which tells me be a little bit more careful you don't need that much paint and then i take my mop or quill it's a quill number two and i'm gonna soak up the colors Right, so let's continue to the next one. So what's next? Number three, magenta and the anthraquinone blue. It's this one. It's also a very, very strong color. Can you see when I put the magenta in the blue, how it just it, it pushes away from each other? It's so cool. It's so cool to see, you know, it's really like the mind of watercolor. It's awesome. See if I get a background here, I'm not sure. So I like this better than than this card. 
there is just too much pigment. So I will try to be less. And I have a cloth here where I'm just drying off my, um, my mop. Yes, let's move on to the next and we have cobalt blue. That's a nice purple. It's a really nice purple. I didn't mix, didn't mix enough. We're just going to get some idea of how it looks. And here on the side, I have my bucket with plenty of water. So what is next? It's turquoise. Yes. Let's get some turquoise. I think this scene, this color all also seemed to have a lot of pigment. Yeah, all of them do. So this seems to be a bluish color. Yeah. That's, it's so cool to mix. I would never know. I would not have known that magenta and turquoise turns out to be this blue color. That's that's so cool. Imagine uh, imagine doing a sp spontaneous <laughs> landscape pa painting and just throw in colors and you get this. Awesome. I'm amazed. <clears throat> so I will show you one more color. 
and maybe I should just fast forward or just skip ahead. I don't know how uh, interesting this is for you guys to, to see. So the next color is Viridian. It's a very clear green color. And I found it a bit hard to pick up. Just hard to get some paint on my uh, brush. That's just something I noticed with the, the paint. Ooh, cool. Wow, what a difference. And this one turned out to be like almost black or very, very dark gray with a, with a violet. No, the violet. When I mixed violet and um, viridian. Cool. Very cool. So yeah, I just, since I'm, I'm a new beginner, um, at water, at watercolor painting, and I really want to get to know the colors and understand them. I just don't, I don't want to just, you know, throw in some color on some, you know, on paper and you get a landscape and that's that. I want to understand what's happening. And I think this is a very good way for anyone who's a new beginner, a newbie like me. And I just want to show you that this is, I think it's a very nice way of getting to know your paint. And maybe you guys enjoy to watch the colors, you know, do all the work themselves as much as I enjoy watching others do it. So yeah, it looks almost like this was a little bit granulating as well. So next color is uh, Green Appetite Genuine. Oh, one of my absolute favorite colors. It's so cool. You know, oh, look at that green. You know, trees, pine trees, my God, yes. So nice. you get a brownish color. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. And that was number seven. mixing enough.
And I should have let that dry before I painted over it. Very nice. Hmm. I'm thinking background colors here, rocks. So it looks like it's going to back run or it's granulating, but I think it's back running. <clears throat> but never mind, it's okay. Let's remove the color. So what I'm doing when I remove the paint on the plate like that is uh, that I dry, I s um, take um, a suck out the water. So then it, they say that the brush is thirsty. So then it sucks up what's there on the plate.
yeah so uh my battery is also running <laughs> running out on my audio so i couldn't record uh, me talking about all the colors so that's why you got some music instead but so uh now i've swatched or mixed all the colors and wow what a difference right very very different but i also noticed something uh number 12 was uh magenta together with the violet blue right and here you have on 11 the violet blue and magenta this is it and it it's difficult to show but they are actually a little bit different in color this one seems a little bit more purple and this one a little bit more on yeah they're they're a little bit different so it does depend a lot on how much pigment you take from each color of course but <clears throat> If we look at, um, let's say, number four, uh, it's the magenta with cobalt blue. This one is also kind of purple. And here you have the violet blue with cobalt blue. It's on three. So this one is a darker purple. Yeah. So you have some some differences you see number six was uh, the violet blue with the green appetite genuine and here on seven you have the magenta with the same green so they they are different right and here oh look at that look at those two uh, oranges uh it's nickel quinacrid nickel quinacridone gold and quinacridone rust together with magenta and you get these awesome purples and here you have violet with the two so here is the violet with a with the gold color and here is with the rust so huge difference and if we bring out this you get the basic colors of those two so they're very much the same, the rust, but here you get a more brownish co color. And here is a big difference. So that's, that was kind of a lot of fun. And again, I noticed that um, the pearl scarlet, it it's a very strong color. I think it's very hard to, to mix, but it's a very fun exercise to do and you know it's nice and easy and you just get to enjoy um, painting without actually painting anything uh, and then you can use the information you have tried out which you have painted out you can use that information and you know go back to it you know and see what what happened what should I mix if I want this color or what can I expect if I take these cro three colors and I want to do a spontaneous uh, uh, landscape painting and just throw in these colors what what happens and I can look at the mix and yeah I, I can get some kind of idea what's gonna happen and that's fun anyway um, so I have 12 more slots to fill. I do have some more Daniel Smith colors, which I absolutely love. You have the very basic colors, the ultramarine, the permanent Eleutherian crimson, uh, the burnt sienna, the burnt umber, and uh, the paints gray, lemon yellow. You have these basic colors, which are very easy and nice to use when painting, especially landscapes. Uh, so you can get it through with five to six colors with no problem. 
but uh, these were different uh, from what I have learned. So I wanted to to try out something new. And since I'm new at it, I don't have very much to compare with. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's all. As I said, it takes too long to show you the mixes of all the 12 colors. I just want to show you that this is the way to do it. And next time I'm doing a watercolor uh, tutorial or a tutorial. The next time I'm doing a watercolor video, I was actually thinking of starting out with some painting and I'm thinking of trying out uh, washes how to do an even wash and uh, either I'm gonna draw something very easy uh, or very simple or I'm gonna um, use a picture from a, a color book and play with washes there is the thing is just that those pictures are usually kind of small and detailed but uh, yeah I'll see what I'll do but um, that's uh, the next step I think so um, I hope you found this interesting and informative if you have any questions please leave a comment below and don't forget to hit that subscribe if you haven't already and then I will see you next time, of course. Thank you for watching.